All right, next question. Uh, Pastor Steve says this. Um, okay, this is a good one. How does an introvert manage Christianity? My question is because it's hard for me to meet people or be outgoing. I sort of like to just be by myself, but obviously that doesn't work well with being used and in the body of Christ. Yeah, um, there's a, I'm, I'm going to look this up for you. This is uh, in the book of Proverbs. I should, I should have this memorized and I don't. Uh, but the book of Proverbs uh, talks about the fact that a friend needs to make himself friendly. And um, let me let me see. It's Proverbs 18.24. Um, Man who has friends must himself be friendly. And then it says, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And, and so... Uh, that would be the first thing. I'm, you know, I'm an introvert. I, you know, I, uh, I do a good job. Well, I don't know if it's a good job, but I, I try to make myself not an introvert. And so I, I, I try to talk to people and, and that kind of thing. But I'd really rather not be out front and, and uh, that kind of stuff. I get really embarrassed when people talk to me about what I've done and, you know, they congratulate me or, or those kinds of things. So I, I, know, I know what, you, I know what you're, you're like. Uh, I may not as be, be as big a, an introvert as you are, but I still have those tendencies. In fact, going up to, you know, anyway, we're, any, anytime we're driving through the countryside, um, my wife and I have these conversations, conversations where we look at, uh, you know, like farmhouses way out in the boonies someplace. And she goes, would you like to live there? And I'm always like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to live there. And she goes, she goes, I'm so glad you're a pastor because I could not hack it. My wife really likes, really likes to talk to people. So um, I think you get the, the right mindset in the, in the first place. You know that um, you can't just be an introvert. You can't just be somebody who's quiet and, and, and doesn't do anything and, and uh, sits off by yourself. And this is the way um, that I got past that. Um, the, the Bible talks about um, the fact that he, you know, he who waters will be watered himself and the liberal soul will be made fat. And it's the idea of, of giving out. And so from the, from the time that I was a young Christian, I was always involved in ministry. And so first I picked ministries where I didn't have to say a whole lot. So like being an usher, they wanted ushers. And, you know, I figured I could carry one of those bags. <laughs> you know, I don't have to talk to anybody and, and that kind of thing. And so that's where I started out. And so then I got to know people and, and, and that kind of thing. And, and then over time, God started using me in other areas. But um, the, the main point that I'm making here is that, that my life, in the, in the sense of my, all, all the ministry that I've ever done, and this is how ministry is supposed to go, has been other-centered in the sense that I need to be giving out to people. I, you know, I, I didn't spend a whole lot of time at church just going to church and just getting, 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 getting. Um, there, there's a period of time when, when that is totally appropriate when you're a young Christian, but not too long, not too long. And you should be giving out. In fact, uh, I've had conversations with people who've been Christians for, you know, five and seven and 10 years and, and, uh, just coming in and, and talking to me about the fact that, you know, they're, they're not, they're not getting enough. And, uh, I, I don't just dismiss people like that, but that's a ridiculous viewpoint that is not what's supposed to be happening what's supposed to be happening is uh after you've been a believer for a while it's not about you getting anymore now it's about you giving out and so um, what i found is that as i have given out that that god has poured into me liberal soul will be made fat and he who waters will be watered himself and so um as i'm as i'm pouring out the water of the spirit the water of the word you know as i as i'm being a pitcher for jesus what jesus is doing is is filling me up and that that frankly is one of those things that makes you attractive to people so um everybody that i've ever known that, that's been socially awkward um that i've ever had a conversation with one of the things that i talked with them about um is who is it that they like who are the people that they like and why do they like them and there are certain people that that you just click with and usually the people that you click with are people who um, obviously care about you and they don't want anything from you. It's just those two things. They care about you and they don't want anything from you. And, and so there's, their caring is a, is a giving kind of attitude. 
and obviously not having an agenda, you know, including the agenda of I want you to be my friend. Mm-hmm. You know, um, just just people who who give in that in that instance, they're very attractive. People like to be around them. They you know people want to be their friends, and God's designed uh, humanity that way. It sh- everybody should be like that. There should be nobody who doesn't have any friends, because everybody is so so busy giving out to others that um, everybody else wants to be around them. It's, it's a good way to get your needs met too. Instead of constantly going around going, I need 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 need, give it to me now. I want you to give me, you know, that, that kind of thing. People just walk away from that. But on the other hand, if everybody in a church was just had an attitude of, you know, I care about you and I want to give to you and I want to, I want to bless you and I want to take care of you and, and I can, what can I do for you? Um, everybody's needs get, get, gets mm-hmm. met and most people would be just going, you know, that's enough. <laughs> you know, I, I don't need any. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of thing. So that's, that's what I do. So I've, I've always been involved in, in some kind of ministry. Um, uh, when you're when you're hanging out with people, uh, doing things for the Lord, um, you get tight with with certain people. Always been involved involved in a home fellowship uh, when I was growing up uh, as a young Christian, and uh, some of those guys are are still my tight buddies, even though I don't live with them anymore, live around them anymore. So one of the things the Bible says, tell me where the verse is at, but to grow as a believer, and we should all be growing because if we're not, I mean. We're not just staying stagnant. If we're staying stagnant, we're either dying or we're, you know, losing. Mm-hmm. We're on the fence. We're lukewarm. We're supposed to be growing constantly. And the way you do that is you're in the Word, prayer, you're in fellowship. And then I think on all the stuff that you said is this so key. It's so key today is that witnessing, serving, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's a part of growing in Christ. And if you're not doing that, I mean, you can go to church. You can be technically in the Word. I don't know how you eat only once a week, but... Uh, you can pray and you can be in fellowship if you're going around and, you know, meet and greet and stuff. But serving, witnessing, fellowship, it's a part of growth, but it requires you to do all the things that you talk about. And I think it, a lot of people don't grow because they're missing that aspect in, your, in their walk, but it's so important. Yeah, it's Acts 2, 42 through 47. Okay. And um, that's how the church grew. That's how individuals grow. That's how churches grow. It's, uh, it, it's you know, people want a formula for church growth. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know, they continued in the apostles' uh, doctrine and in the breaking of bread and prayers and uh, uh, and in fellowship. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. They were a witness to the people who were around them. And so you take in and then you give out. And that's the way that it works. And if, if you're not doing that, like you said, you're not going to grow. It kind of puts you, in my perspective, it puts everything else to the test. You know, as far as loving people, righteousness, patience, all the stuff that we're supposed to be like as a Christian, 1 Corinthians, the whole love is patient, love is kind thing. If you're not over in Sunday school, and if you're not serving or witnessing, whatever people do, you know, missions, whatever God has them, if you're not actively serving and doing that stuff, you're not really, I mean, how do you, it's the test of, do you really love people? Mm -hmm. Well, then go over into Sunday school, and you should be getting along with all the teachers and dealing with the parents (laughs) and stuff. Uh It it puts all of our Christianity of it's not about me to the test. Right. Yeah. It puts it all in line. Yeah. And God promises to bless it when you do it. Mm-hmm. So that's how, you know, uh, every good friend that I've ever had, every good friend that I've ever had, like really good friends, um, are people that I've served with in ministry. And so you want friends. Those are the kind you, those are the kind you want. And that's the kind of friend you want to be.